All right, so today we're talking about forced colors and prefers contrast. So these are accessibility features for Windows and for Mac OS that are sort of implemented. These things are still experimental. They're still um, under development. And I'll talk about all that in just a minute. Uh, what I have here on the screen is the same web page. I've got dark mode enabled on my system. And we've got Safari and we've got Chrome and exact same CSS. There's nothing that's changing the CSS based on what browser I'm using. It's just what's supported right now. Now I'm using a bunch of the system colors. And if you're looking for more explanation, more detail on that, uh, I recently did a video on system colors. So you'll see the link up at the top there. Right here, this H2 heading, I have the mark background color and the mark text color applied on this H2. And in Safari, that one's not being supported. In Safari, the highlight color changes if you're on dark mode, light mode. Um, the standard system color for highlight doesn't change in Chrome based on that. So if I jump into my settings here in my system preferences, if I go into general and I change this to light, you will see here, it's the same highlight color in light mode, but when I switch over to dark, that's when I'm losing contrast here. So this isn't working on Chrome. Uh, so that's something that you might want to adjust with these media queries that we're going to be talking about. All right, so that's the general setting, switching between light and, mode, light and dark. And in the accessibility section, if you go into display right here, there's an increased contrast and you can see it changes the Chrome around here. There's nothing on my page that's changing currently because I haven't written any CSS to do that, but this is how you could increase the contrast. So if you have an accessibility of vision issue and you're looking to improve the contrast of the page for yourself, this is the setting right here to do it. Increase contrast inside of display. So I'll be toggling that and toggling light and dark mode as we talk about these things. All right, set that aside. Jumping into our code here, uh, you can see things have a lot of borders and highlighting. That is what VS Code does with the increased contrast mode. So if I turn that off, there we go. This is back to not requesting increased contrast. Now, what I was showing there is the Mac OS settings. On Windows, there is a section in the settings for you can request high contrast mode. So it's it's a setting that's been around in Windows for years and years and years. And if you enable that, we can now target that in CSS. So my page right here is connected to this CSS file. And I have a few media queries down here at the bottom. I've got nothing inside them right now, just some comments. But forced colors active or forced colors none. Those are the two values for the forced colors media query that apply to Windows. In Windows, if you enable this high contrast mode, this is what's going to be activated. It's going to say, oh, okay, yeah, you've got force colors active turned on. And it's going to change which system colors are going to be applied by default to elements in your page. Um, now I'm using here a bunch of these system colors that I mentioned earlier, that link to uh, access the video to find out more about those. But these are just sort of built-in colors that I can use. Here's the mark and mark text that Safari didn't support. I've got color scheme enabled so I can toggle between light and dark and use those system colors. And my default color, if nothing else is done to the colors, if there's no media queries applying to it, hot pink, that is going to be my default color. If I jump back to the browsers, here's the hot pink on both of those. Here's the hot pink on the H2 in Chrome. So we have these three things right now that are using that default color that I've got applied. Okay, so force colors active. This is really for Windows only at the moment. Forced color adjust is a way that you can leave this to auto or none. If it's auto, then the person turns on the forced color, the high contrast mode, and your CSS will be changed automatically by the system. It'll change the system colors. If you put this in here, if you say force color adjust is none, 
it will ignore the fact that the person has the high contrast mode turned on. Now, this isn't intended as a way for you to skirt accessibility to say, you know, I don't care if you want high contrast mode, I'm going to use these colors. You need to really think about what you're doing with the force color adjust. If there's something that you know is not going to work well across all the browsers, like for example, that light blue background with white text. So in situations like that, you might want to say, you know what, ignore what the system is trying to do. I can improve the accessibility. I can improve the contrast myself. So I'm going to disable it for this element and I'm going to specify what colors I want to be used at all times. Maybe just the color is changing or maybe it's the background. But whatever the case is, this is for you to target and fix problems, not to skirt or get around accessibility. I just want to be very clear about that. Okay, now uh, the force colors, what it's doing. This is supported Chrome Edge, IE Firefox, and really we're talking about Windows because Windows is the one with that high contrast mode. It's not that setting for increased contrast on Mac. Mac will just ignore this entirely. It doesn't matter what browser you're on, but you can put in some CSS. And just for your reference, this is a list of the properties that are affected when you go into high contrast mode. These are the colors that get changed. And these are some other properties that can be impacted. So box shadow, text shadow are both going to be forced to have the value of none. It doesn't matter what you've set. It'll turn those to none. Background image, as long as you're not using a gradient, if you're doing an image, it'll be left alone with the image. If you're using a gradient, it'll turn it to none. Color scheme will be forced to this and the scroll bar colors, scroll bar colors will be turned to auto, even if you set something else. So that's what's happening with the high contrast mode with this force colors. If that is turned to active. Now here, this is one that I can demonstrate a little bit more with because we're on Mac OS prefers contrast. So we've got several settings. There's no preference, meaning this is your default. There's nobody said, Hey, I need more contrast or I've changed the colors or I'm using high contrast mode, anything like that. So that's your default more. That's when I check that checkbox in the accessibility panel, I come in here and I say, increase contrast. That's going to equal this. So we can, and we will um, change some CSS when that happens. Less, um, there's no real support for it. It's there, it's part of the standard, but there's no way for me to change this to less contrast through my accessibility settings. And the last value, custom, so this would be another media query. If you said perverse contrast is set to custom, this is what on Mac OS is going to do the same sort of thing as uh, force colors set to active. So you can override things like that. Okay, so let's do a couple of things with preferred contrast more. Um, one example of something that you might want to consider, if somebody's asking for more contrast, it likely means that they have a vision issue and you want to support that a little bit better. So increasing font size is a simple thing that you can do. So if the person, let's jump into the two browsers here. So there's Chrome and there's Safari, both of them up. When I check the checkbox for increased contrast, I'm changing my default size on the HTML element. And because I'm using REMs for all of my font sizes, those will automatically cascade down and I will get increased sizes, which makes it much more readable. Even here where I've got this terrible situation in Chrome because it didn't change the highlight color that I had. I had a system color in there. It didn't change that. So it was poor contrast, but increasing the font size does improve that situation a little bit for us still. Okay, and then other things that we can change. Uh, let's say if I want my paragraphs inside of my section to change, you know, whatever CSS you want to put in here, I'm going to change it from sans serif, the default to, uh, or rather from serif, which is the default to sans serif. And we can add a border on there. We can even change the background color. And there we are. So we've got increased visibility, increased contrast, 
And we've hard coded the colors because we know that there's that difference between things. If we're using the system colors, it's not perfect yet. As I said earlier, this is all still experimental. It's still under development how all these system colors are going to be Im implemented. Uh, WebKit still has some predefined values that are used instead of the system colors in a few cases, but we can definitely improve the experience for our users by leaning on this prefers contrast and targeting things that we know when we test across multiple browsers, if we know that they're not working out, we can improve the situation for them. All right. And so that's pretty much everything there is to show you about these different things. Um, I encourage you to experiment with them. If you're looking for a copy of this code, if you look down in the description of the video, you will find a link to the code just that has all this CSS. And I encourage you to experiment with this. Try it out in different browsers. If you've got access to a Windows system and a Mac OS system, try it out on both and get the force colors thing to work. And be sure to try out the force color adjust set to none to see if you can override things that way too. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.